It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And tonight's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Steelers and the Dirty Birds. And it's coming up next. A full house expected here tonight, over 70,000. And the fans still filing in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium just west of downtown Atlanta. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Atlanta Falcons. On to get it started now, the kicker, Chris Boswell. And we are underway from Atlanta. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled it to 15. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And we get a glance here at their leader, the man who will be calling the plays under center. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was snacks. just gonna say. That's, that's where I go. First carry of the ball game now, it's C.J. Anderson. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing the holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're coming off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Let's go, defense. Let's get out the field, defense. They run again on first down. Anderson. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. A nice run here early on. And that took a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber who runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. From the gun, it's a give to Anderson. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Throwing his far. He finds his man complete. That's Haynes. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. First and 10, it's far. Finding some room at midfield. And finally marked down at the 42-yard line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. And they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running rounds with confidence as the game goes on. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Favre. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Here's second and ten. Now far. Screenplay, Anderson. Fighting through, and he's got space. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 of the 15. 
that is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. First down, here's the run with Anderson. He takes us down to about the 12 for a game no of three. Absolutely. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Farb to throw. Caught on the right side by Jones. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. To throw as far. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. So out now comes the field goal unit for the Falcons. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. Well, they didn't get in the end zone, but pretty good balance there on the opening drive between the run and the pass. Yeah, I think that that was probably what they wanted to get accomplished right out of the gate. Throw the ball with success, run it, of course, to set the tone. So we saw the offensive coordinator's play sheet, probably wrote himself a little note, exactly what we wanted to do. Probed it early and got it done. Kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy that springs for the good stuff. Now Marino on first down. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Looked like man coverage able to read it there on the outside for the completion. That'll be something to track as the game goes along here. It certainly will, and there's so many different ways that they will try to figure out whether they're in man or zone. Sometimes you'll run a guy in motion to see if someone runs with him. Other times you'll empty out the backfield, spread it out, and see if everyone comes out and matches up. In any event, anytime you see man coverage, you tell your guys you got to win those matchups because if you do, you'll get the football and probably for a nice game. Going long here for Wallace. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Marino's incompletion on first down leads to second and ten. Now Marino to throw it. Got his man there, it's Wallace complete. And that's gonna be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 37. Well, I think when they look at the offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they wanna move the ball around, they wanna spread it to different people. 
people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Marino looks to toss it again. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this ball incomplete. Uh, looked very much to be a catchable ball. He could not hang on. Second down coming up. He without a ton of pressure in his face. It just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. On second and ten, Marino. That one complete to Bettis. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Nothing after one on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a third down coming up. so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Going a little tennis on me, I huh? know you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. That. They, yeah. crack, they crack a forehand back at him. They get a backhand. What was the it, what was it, return on It was a backhand. I and like a that really one. good backhand. With some nice top spin on the a little whole bit. thing. A little bit. I love it. Yeah. Almost a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Two things to watch. First, his strength and being able to break out of that initial contact. But at his size, once you slow his momentum, it's hard for him to get it started again and end up tackling him behind the line of scrimmage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. He'll look to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Gonzalez. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Hey, 
And they'll throw on first down with Favre. He's going to sling this deep downfield. It's incomplete. Took a shot and couldn't connect. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. A give to Anderson here out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense. Six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. This size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now it's Moreno. His throw incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Moreno. And this is going to be incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Falcons will be taking over first and ten. Atlanta regains possession of the football, and on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Coming up on three minutes left in the half in a 3-3 ball game. Just a pair of field goals to this point. They start the drive with Anderson. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. A great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. 
On second down, far. He completes it to Jones. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. short they'll try and pick it up through the air and he gets it to the 32 good enough for a first down to go tie ball game we remind you that coming up at halftime we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side so his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to, to get the coach some highlights here yes we do Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? On first down, far. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, it's far. He finds his man complete. It's Gonzalez. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. But here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. just over a minute to go before halftime. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the shotgun, it's far. Looking deep for Julio. And this is caught inside the five. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. A big connection on that one. 37 yards. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. Kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. 
They'll run for it with Anderson. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So they'll try again with Anderson. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. A great play there. Take it in. And the Falcons have taken the lead. So it was the passing game that got him down here. But closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. The try here for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. From the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Second and six, just inside the 30. To throw is Moreno. It's complete to Brown, right side. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Marino off the of play action. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Miller. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time. But it's right on the money on the right sideline. A really good route. Moving the defenders towards the middle of the field. And I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play. With all the views coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now uh, here's the call. After you the play. Field now, Marino. 
Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down of the sack. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Here's Marino to throw. Throw left side taken in by Miller. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. How about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And Marino's throw there incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. On is the punt team now as this one's set away. And this will pin him back deep. That's going to kick out of bounds right at about the seven-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we're at halftime here in Atlanta with a... And now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Taking it about the one. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And the Steeler offense ready to get going here in this third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. up to the 34-yard line. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. They'll throw on first down with Marino. And hold in by the tight end Miller. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's second and a yard. Yeah. 
On the give, this is Harris. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. They run with Harris. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Get it! Get it! They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Marino. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll make it second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. First and 10 at the 19. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Moreno here from the gun. This will be caught by Brown. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Taken in at the three. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Let's make these babies. 
Now a give running left with Anderson. Anderson loses the football. And it looks like Steeler football. It is. So turnovers, Charles, you figure will be key in the second half. And that's a big giveaway there. Yeah, and as you and I both know, coaches are always preaching ball security. And none more often than right here in the second half of a tight football game. Now you've got to believe what the coaches are saying and take care of that football. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. fumble recovery it's Marino and that is incomplete I think we can all understand what they're thinking right now they take over the ball and field goal range after the turnover so they've got that in their hip pocket but they've got to go for the end zone and turn this into a bigger point their thinking is a touchdown is really what they should get from starting here getting three points at the end of this drive that would feel disappointing Throwing again on second and ten. Marino will complete this one to Swan. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Now Marino to throw it. And that is incomplete. They're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first run. take advantage of the short field. Definitely a lost opportunity right there. I mean, they were in prime position to put six on the board. Ended up settling for three. successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And a nice job there on special teams to limit him to inside the 15 as he's dropped at the 14. set to begin their next drive the Falcons offense at the line and last time they coughed it up led to a field goal they're fortunate that it only led to a field goal but still they're not happy about it could you sense the relief though when they only gave up the field goal and they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession the coach will just be relieved though if they recoup with a score here right i think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield function the end zone without turning it over back now in atlanta this one's still anybody's ball game it's a one point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter play Three yards remain for second down. Now far. Man open here is 
Jones. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Tenth carry now for Anderson. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand. They're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Favre. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there. And it's second down. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I can dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. To throw is far. Complete to Jones. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Throwing is far. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Gonzalez. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Could just sit on it here, could they? Had the throw the ball third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively, a backbreaker. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Here's Favre to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Gonzalez. And he's going to get this down near the 20 yard line. These guys are running offense like you drive. The ball is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back to back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. First and ten, it's far. And all this is taken in one-handed. What a catch. That catch good for only a couple. One-handed. Love the effort. Not much production on that play, though, huh? Not a whole lot of yardage. You get that grab, you probably want a first down. And he'll be the one in the film session if he's saying, hey, run that one back, coach. Yeah. Run that one back. One more time. Let's see that Two again. More time. And they won't. Eight more time. They won't. Didn't get much out of it. On second down, Anderson. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. 
But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. They'll look to throw here. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He hit his first, this one from 38. And this one is right through. And the lead grows to four, it's 13-9. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that gonna be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden they're down. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. So now the Steelers down on the scoreboard. A minute 51 on the clock. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. throw deep downfield and incomplete on the deep ball. These are the spots this stage of the game where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does, and in the second quarter, he may very well run by him, but in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Now a throw here to his running back. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Position. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. 
from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Again, Anderson. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And that is incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. And from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do. We kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet. Okay, being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They're down here in a one-score game, but the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not, because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences, and this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Complete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Throwing here, Marino. He's gonna let it fly. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. The receivers have been running them ragged. Maybe some tired legs in the secondary. Maybe some tired legs in the pass rush. Didn't get to him. And look what resulted. A touchdown. Tie game. They've got a chance to take the lead. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. 